I was in Bihar, East India last week. I was talking to some of the women farmers Iri has been working with um, and they told me there were two things that transformed their life significantly in the, in the recent years. First was their recognition as farmers in their own right, rec getting that identity. Uh, that might seem trivial to a lot of us. I think we take it for granted. But these women have been toiling on their rice fields for years and generations and have never been recognized as farmers. They were just unpaid family labor. And as a result, they had no access to inputs, no access to technologies, no access to credit, nor land. And they remained in that vicious cycle of low productivity and, and poverty and, and incomes. And when they started working with IRI, engaging in the participatory technology development and evaluation programs, they got access to technologies like let's say machine transplanting of rice, direct feeding of rice, using good agronomic practices, you know, managing good nurseries for healthy seedlings, and so on and so on. And as a result, they gained a lot of confidence and started using these practices. And now they are recognized as knowledgeable and progressive farmers in their own right, by their households, by their communities. They saved a lot of time and energy. And they're able to use that time now to take care of their children's education, look after the household better, but also take care of themselves and their well-being. And they said that has made a significant difference in their lives. Improved productivity, gave them more income. And some women, saw the economic opportunity as they started using those transplanters. So in their collective, in their self-help group, they came together and then started, they bought a machine transplanter and started a custom hiring center. So where they are providing machine transplanting services to other farmers within their village, but also outside and earning some income. At the same time, they're also filling a gap that exists in service provision. And as a result, these women are now also being recognized as budding businesswomen, and they've gained a lot of credibility and respect in their communities. I mean, I was talking to some of the men in those villages, and they were so proud of their wives, their daughters, and daughters-in-law who were doing this. To put it in context, Bihar is a very patriarchal society, has been. Just for these women to break those social norms and take on roles that were traditionally done by men, I mean driving a machine in the rice field not heard of before, wasn't easy. They faced a lot of sneers and jeers when they started. Well, there were men, people who asked, who do you think you are, men? What are you even trying to do? But then they persevered, they persisted. And, and they managed to do that mainly because they stayed and worked as a collective. Being in that group gave them that power. As a result, uh, some, um, a lot of these women now have access to inputs, have access to technologies, you know, they can rent land. A lot of them have bank accounts. They can get loans. And they are able to make decisions on what to produce, what to sell, where to sell, and how to use the income they earned. And that is an example of how targeting technology is right and using the right process to get them to women can make a significant difference in power relations within the households, within the communities, and within the society.